All the information shared in this video is available on the public platform. Nothing is discussed here which may breach the confidentiality of our armed forces. Defense Detective respects our defense forces and works only on the information that is available for public use. Millions of people are on the streets. Schools and colleges are closed. The crowd is hell-bent on killing. It's a situation like civil war. The people have rebelled. Why is Gilgit Baltistan burning? These pictures are enough to tell what's happening in Gilgit Baltistan. The entire region has come to a standstill. The situation has worsened so much that Pakistan army had to be deployed to control it. The people of Gilgit Baltistan are demanding their reunion with India and are openly announcing to return back to India. Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Defence Detective Global. Many questions are arising as what led to such a situation in Gilgit Baltistan. Why this region, which was merged with Pakistan in the name of Islam, is burning today? And is it possible for Gilgit Baltistan to get reunited with India? We are going to answer all these questions in today's video. Slogans of returning home to India are now echoing in Gilgit Baltistan, which was under Pakistan's control for the last 75 years. The protest is so huge that the Karakoram Highway connecting Pakistan to China is repeatedly being closed. A crowd of hundreds of thousands have been gathering here. Although massive protests have been going on in many areas of Gilgit Baltistan for the last six to seven months, but in the last few days, the situation here has become more tense. According to the reports, the blasphemy law of Pakistan is behind the ongoing protests. A few days ago, more than 80 Christian homes and 19 churches were vandalized by a mob in Jadamwala in Pakistan on charges of blasphemy. And now, there is an uproar in Gilgit, Baltistan due to this. Religion has always been weaponized and used as a political tool in Pakistan. In 1980, Pakistan's military dictator Ziaul Haq brought Ordinance 298A, according to which the punishment for blasphemy was three years in jail and a fine. Ziaul Haq had used the ordinance extensively to save his chair. The result was that the Ahmadis, another religious minority of Pakistan, were thrown out of Islam by making a law and were called anti-Islamic. Now, once again, religion is being used as a political tool in Pakistan, but this time the target is Shia Muslims. In January this year, Abdul Ahmad Chitrali of Jamaat e Islami presented a private member's bill in the National Assembly of Pakistan for amendment in blasphemy law. On the same day, that is 17 January 2023, the Assembly unanimously passed this bill. In July, the President also approved the Criminal Laws Amendment Bill 2023. But ever since this bill was introduced in the Assembly, there has been an uproar in Pakistan. According to the new law, instead of three years of imprisonment for blasphemy, the punishment will range from 10 years to life imprisonment. On receiving the complaint, the police will be able to take direct action and it will be a non billable offence. Pakistan ki Qaumi Assembly ne, uh, 17 January 2023 ko Sahaba, Kram aur Umadul Mominin aur in ke hawale se tohin par Umar Qaid ki saza ka bil muttafiqa tawar par manzoor kar liya. Aur is mein ye hai ke jo sazae hain us mein izafa kar diya gaya. Us bil ki jo uh, manzooni di gai. Is ko pesh karne wale uh, Jamaat Islami ke rukn Maulana Abdul Akbar Chitrali ne is ko pesh kiya tha. Aur is se pehle bhi ye kanun Pakistan mein maujood tha. Lekin sazae jo thi wo kam thi. Un sazaon ko badha diya gaya. 
और कितना बढ़ाया गया ये मैं आपको बताती हूँ जैसे कि मैंने आपको बताया है कि मुख्तलि मीडिया में ख़ासतौर पर इंटरनेशनल मीडिया में भी और पाकिस्तान के मीडिया में भी इस बिल की पास होने के बाद खबरें शाया हुई जैसे कि डी डब्ल्यू में ये इस तरीके से खबर शाया हुई कि क्या मौजूदा हालात में नामों से सहाबा बिल की ज़रूरत है अच्छा इसके ऊपर इसकी जो तफसील मिलती है उसमें यह बताया गया है कि बिल के टेक्स्ट जो है ड्राफ्ट है उसके यानी जो उसका उसमें पास कर लिया गया जो कानून उसकी जो शिकें हैं वो ये हैं कि जो इस तरह की कोई तोहन करेगा या वो जो तोहन है वो लिख कर की जाए वो बोल कर की जाए वो नक्श की सूरत में यानी कहीं पर कुछ ऐसा बना दिया जाए कुछ पेंट कर दिया जाए किसी भी सूरत में अगर कोई ऐसी बात की गई जिससे किसी को भी ये लगा कि ये जो है वो सहाबा के खिलाफ या जो मजहबी शख्सियात है उनके खिलाफ बात किसी ना किसी तरीके से भी जा रही है तो उसकी जो सज़ा पहले थी वो तीन साल थी लेकिन उससे बढ़ा कर कम से कम दस साल या उम्र कैद कर दी गई अच्छा फिर इसे काबिल ज़मानत से नाकबिल ज़मानत यानी पहले बेल हो सकती थी लेकिन उसके बाद इसको ऐसा बड़ा जुर्म बना दिया गया कि इस पर बेल भी नहीं हो सकेगी फिर अदालत से जो वारंट जारी होते हैं उसके बजाय इब्तदा में ही वारंट गिरफ्तारी जारी कर दी अदालत से पहले समन जारी किया जाता है ना किसी के खिलाफ या किसी के नाम लेकिन उसके बजाय सीधे सीधे वारंट गिरफ्तारी ही जारी करेंगे तो इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि दानिस्ता ना दानिस्ता या किसी के गलत इल्ज़ाम लगाने पर भी किसी का अगर कोई अपना कोई बदला लेने के लिए किसी के खिलाफ कोई गलत इल्ज़ाम लगाता है तो तब भी जैसा कि बहुत ज़्यादा होता है ये हम जानते हैं कि हमारे मुल्क में ऐसा बहुत ज़्यादा होता है तो उस सूरत में भी ये तमाम सजाएं जो हैं वो उस शख्स को मिलें बट द मैटर इज़ नॉट एज सिंपल एज इट सीम्स टू बी दिस लॉ हैज़ बीन ब्रॉड वेरी थाटफुली एंड क्लेवरली बा सुन्नी मुस्लिम बिकॉज दे डू नॉट वॉन्ट टू लूज देर कंट्रोल ओवर पाकिस्तान एट एनी कॉस्ट But people came to know that the minorities there would bear the brunt of this new law. When the matter became public, voices started being raised against it. Shia Muslims openly called it anti-Shia law. A statement also came from Gilgit Baltistan, which fanned the fire. Skardu-based Shia cleric Aga Bakir Al Husseini gave a statement against this law. He accused the Skardu Ulema Council of targeting Shias through this law. This led to protests in Sunni dominated areas on 22nd August. Sunnis blocked Karakoram Highway demanding registration of FIR against Agha Bakir. After this the police filed an FIR against Maulana Agha Bakir. Preparations were done to arrest Bakir but his supporters came out on the streets. They not only warned the administration about the arrest of Bakir but also openly talked about reuniting gilgit baltistan with india hame nahi jana tumhare mulk mein kholo kargil ka rasta kholo hamara tarikhi rasta hum kargil ki taraf jayenge on the other hand there was an uproar over the statement given by a sunni religious leader kazi nisar on imam mehdi the shia community started demanding the arrest of kazi the surprising thing is that pakistan government is imposing allegations of propaganda on india It is being claimed that everything is all right and under control in Gilgit Baltistan. So Pakistanis should answer why the internet was shut down in Gilgit Baltistan when everything is under control. Why has Pakistan army been deployed there? And the biggest question, have the US, Canada and Britain issued advisory to their citizens regarding Gilgit Baltistan at the behest of India? The truth is that Pakistan has conspired against Gilgit Baltistan since the beginning. It has cheated them, considered them of lower class and did not give them their rights. Now the results of that conspiracy, deception and greed can be seen. Gilgit Baltistan was considered as one of the most peaceful areas in the world. Even when Pakistan occupied it in 1947, there was no violence there. Then what happened that today this peaceful area is sitting on a powder keg this fire was sparked here in the 1980s pakistan is a muslim country but it does not provide a safe place for every muslim it is not easy for shia muslims to live in sunni dominated pakistan but in this sunni dominated country the region of gilgit baltistan had shia majority this was the biggest gap between pakistan government and gilgit baltistan which Ziaul Haq decided to bridge in 1980 how we will tell you in 1980 the construction of Karakoram highway via Gilgit Baltistan started 
and the government officials in Islamabad got easy access to this place. But the Shia majority in Gilgit Baltistan were pricking the leaders in Islamabad like a thorn. So they started the game of converting Shia majority into minority. It started when Ziaul Haq implemented the Zakat law. Shias opposed this law. Ziaul Haq knew that it would happen. The conspiracy was that as soon as Shias would oppose, they would be crushed. Ziaul Haq in 1981 or 1980, the Zakat law was introduced. So the Shias of Pakistan उन्होंने कहा कि जी हम तो अपने जो हैं मुश्तहिद वो नजफ में हो या खुम में हो हम उनको देते हैं जकात हम किसी स्टेट को नहीं देते खास तौर पे एक सुन्नी लैंड स्टेट क्योंकि जियाउल हक के मुतलक कहा जाता था कि वो दियोबंदी लीनिंग से उसकी उस पे फिर पहला झगड़ा हुआ है पाकिस्तान के अंदर مختلف इलाकों में फिर बाद में दोनों तरफ से एक्सट्रीमिज्म हुई उधर से तबर्रा हुआ इधर से मुहर्रम के ऊपर अटैक होने शुरू हो गए लेकिन गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में अब पिछले कंसन सालों से ये बहुत एक्टिविटी हो रही है इजहार अली हुंजई इज अ स्कॉलर अ रेजिडेंट ऑफ गिलगित बल्तिस्तान इजहार हैज बीन द सीईओ ऑफ आगा खान रूरल सपोर्ट प्रोग्राम इन पाकिस्तान ही हैज बीन द रीजनल कोऑर्डिनेटर फॉर एशिया एंड अफ्रीका ऑफ द ग्लोबल वाटर पार्टनरशिप प्रोग्राम इन श्रीलंका ही हैज आल्सो वर्कड एज अ सीनियर साइंटिस्ट एट द इंटरनेशनल वाटर मैनेजमेंट इंस्टीट्यूट इन श्रीलंका Apart from this, he has worked on many high positions. On January 22, 2013, a special report by Hunzei was published on the website of the United States Institute of Peace. The title of the report was Conflict Dynamics in Gilgit, Pakistan. The report explored the reasons for the increasing fundamentalist violent incidents in Gilgit, Pakistan. The conclusion of this report makes it clear how a systematic conspiracy was hatched to eliminate the Shia Muslims of Gilgit, Baltistan. The most surprising thing is that the Pakistan army was also involved in this massacre of Shia Muslims. Shias were in majority in Gilgit, Baltistan of Sunni-dominated Pakistan. Izhar Ali Hunzai writes that after the construction of Karakuram Highway, changes started appearing in this isolated area. For the first time in 1983, the Shia-Sunni dispute turned into a violent clash. After this, mass killings of Shias was done in 1988. Ishar reports that earlier, a rumour was spread that Shias had massacred Sunnis. After this, thousands of armed tribesmen from the south reached Gilgit, Baltistan and started mass killing of Shias. More than 400 Shia Muslims were killed and many of their villages were burnt. To prove that this is a true incident, we will show you a report of Pakistani newspaper Dawn. This is the report by Ahmed Ali Afani, published on 23rd September 2012. Its heading is Sectarian Imbroglio. According to this report, in 1988, Shias were being killed openly in Gilgit, Baltistan, and those who killed them were in the Pakistan army uniform. Some reports claim that 3,000 Shias were murdered in Gilgit, Baltistan on the day of Eid in 1988. This is confirmed by the report published in International Human Rights Observer's Gilgit Baltistan chapter in 2013, in which it has been said that 3,000 people were killed in the massacre in 1988. As per this report, 900 women were widowed and 2,500 children were orphaned in this massacre. After this, target killing of Shias was also done in the year 2012. Shias were selectively killed on the way from Gilgit, Baltistan to Islamabad. Terrorists killed many people in Gilgit with the support of Pakistan army. Shia travellers travelling in four buses were selectively deboarded from the bus and were shot at point-blank range. Pakistan, which weeps crocodile tears on Indian Muslims, maintains silence on Shia Muslims in Pakistan. Reports also show that in the last eight years, 4,000 Shia Muslims have been killed in Pakistan. The truth of this report is proved by the blasts done every day in Pakistani mosques. Most of these mosques are of Shia Muslims. Hundreds of Shia Muslims have been killed in these blasts, but Pakistan only sees the fake oppression of Indian Muslims. It does not see the crowd of Sunni Muslims killing Shia Muslims in their own country, which was started by General Ziaul Haq. Target killing was used by General Ziaul Haq to convert Shia majority in Gilgit, Baltistan into minority. 
The result of this mass killing was that Shias who were earlier in majority in this region their population has decreased rapidly. South Asia Monitor had published an article on 1st September 2020 on the demographic change taking place in Gilgit Baltistan. According to this article in 1947 the population of Shias in Gilgit Baltistan was 80% which came down to 39% in the year 2020 it is said that when oppression crosses all limits rebellion occurs tormented by the atrocities of pakistan if gilgit baltistan is now talking about reuniting with india if its people are rebelling against pakistan then there are reasons for this pakistan has not just killed shia muslims but has also violated their rights let us show you with evidence how gilgit baltistan has been exploited politically and economically from the very beginning in fact the story of gilgit baltistan is also like that of pak occupied kashmir pakistan wants only the land of these two regions not the people do you know when was the first university established in gilgit baltistan it was in the year 2002 it means 55 years after the formation of pakistan Karakoram International University was established here when Parvez Musharraf was the president of Pakistan. You will be surprised to know that Karakoram University is a university just for the name's sake. A large part of this university is occupied by the Pakistan army. The people of Gilgit Baltistan keep raising their voice against this on social media but to no avail. The second university, University of Baltistan was established in the year 2017. Till now there is neither a medical university nor a technical university here thousands of students have to go to pakistan for higher education united nations office for the coordination of humanitarian affairs or ocha released a report on education in gilgit baltistan on 6th may 2016 this report clearly states that only 40% of the children of gilgit are getting early childhood education Pakistan's newspaper Dawn published a news on the education of Gilgit Baltistan on 18th October 2009. Its title was Education in Gilgit and Baltistan. According to the report, Gilgit Baltistan has mostly rural areas and there is a huge difference in the education level between urban and rural areas. Not only this, the people of Gilgit Baltistan are being oppressed in every way. They are being made to yearn for even the smallest things. It has been 76 years but even today they neither have proper roads nor bridges on rivers and streams there are not even proper schools for education the biggest thing is that karakoram highway is passing through gilgit baltistan but the condition of roads inside this region is shocking you can see the poor infrastructure in rural areas in these pictures at some places children have to cross the raging river by hanging from ropes while at other places crossing a bridge is like inviting death the ratio of female education in gilgit baltistan is very low apart from lack of infrastructure there's another big reason for it terrorism terrorist attacks on school in this region are not new a few years ago 12 schools were burnt simultaneously in chilas in gilgit baltistan most of these were girl school चलास दयामर में नामालूम अफराद ने 12 स्कूलों को तबाह कर दिया तबाह होने वाले स्कूलों में अक्सरियत गर्ल्स स्कूल्स की है 10 स्कूल्स को आग लगाई गई दो स्कूलों को बारूदी मवाद से उड़ाया गया एवरी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ पाकिस्तान अनाउंसेस न्यू प्रोजेक्ट्स इन गिलगित बाल्टिस्तान बट दीस प्रोजेक्ट्स आर जस्ट ऑन पेपर एंड नेवर सी द लाइट ऑफ द डे नाउ लेट अस टेल यू हाउ द पॉलिटिकल राइट्स ऑफ पीपल ऑफ गिलगित बाल्टिस्तान आर आल्सो स्नैच्ड अवे फ्रॉम देम When Imran Khan was the Prime Minister of Pakistan his party also got majority in the elections held in Gilgit Baltistan Khalid Khurshid Khan was the CM of Gilgit Baltistan but as soon as Imran Khan was removed from the post of PM and many cases were filed against him Shehbaz Sharif's government started targeting the government of Gilgit Baltistan First Khalid Khurshid Khan was accused of using the region's police force for Imran Khan's security and then he was disqualified in the fake degree case in july just before the new cm was going to be elected in the gilgit baltistan assembly the police force reached inside the assembly and sealed the entire assembly the attempt was to somehow end pti's majority in the assembly not only this a few days ago a deadly attack was also done on khalid khurshid in which his life was narrowly saved Pakistan army is highly involved in Gilgit Baltistan the army also does political manipulation openly Pakistan army has a big role behind what is still happening in Gilgit Baltistan 
वी आर नॉट सेइंग दिस अ रिटायर्ड कर्नल फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान आर्मी हिमसेल्फ इज टेलिंग दिस लिसन उन्होंने क्या किया जो धमाका किया वो उन्होंने वहां पे जीबी की हुकूमत चेंज की उनकी असेंबली बंद की उससे उन्होंने एक प्रेशर कुकर तैयार किया फिर अभी ये जो सारी चीज हो रही है ना ये उनके जो वो लीडर हैं एक उनका नाम मुझे अभी जहन में नहीं सैयद अभी आप सोचें कि वो ये सारे लोग जो हैं ये कौन है ये शिया लोग हैं ठीक है अभी आप एक और बीच के अंदर आप एक और यहां पर आके क्योंकि उन्होंने कोई वो नहीं रिलीजियस इशू इसलिए नहीं उठाया उन्होंने तो ये बिजली का वो उठाया ना बिजली के बिलों से शुरू हुई बात और फिर उसके ऊपर उन्होंने उस, उनको बंद किया लेकिन आप देखें क्योंकि चीजें मिल जाती हैं ये जो तेल पानी मिक्स करने की इनको आदत पड़ गई है ना अभी मुझे बताएं कि आसिम मुनीर जो है ये बाकिर को पकड़ के किस मुंह के साथ ईरानियों के साथ जो है खड़ा होगा कि जनाब क्योंकि इसकी फैमिली तो वो पासपोर्ट छुपा सर आपसे मुनीर लगता है प्रूव करना चाहता है कि मैं जन मुनीर नहीं हूं लेकिन ये सर इट्स नॉट रिलीजियस और सेक्टेरियन इशू इट इज प्योरली पॉलिटिकल इशू सर इट इज पॉलिटिकल इशू इट इज एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव इशू इट इज द इशू के इन्होंने पाकिस्तान की इकोनॉमी की जड़ मार दी है सो यू हर्ड अ फॉर्मर ऑफिसर ऑफ पाकिस्तान आर्मी सेइंग दैट द रायट्स टेकिंग प्लेस इन गिलगित बाल्टिस्तान आर बिकॉज़ ऑफ पाकिस्तान आर्मी चीफ आसिम मुनीर people here are also openly saying similar things aap sab ne jaan chuke hain ki hame aapas mein ladane wala kaun hai pata chal gaya na shia sunni ko pakistan mein ladane wala kaun hai pata chal gaya hai hame main kehna chahta hu duniya ke pakistani ustad muslim ko aur pakistani hukmaron ko main kehna chahta hu ye kaun hai jo shia sunni ko lada ke apne maqasid pe pahunch rahe hain ye kaun hai While we are talking about Pakistan Army it is also important to mention that in Gilgit Baltistan Pakistan Army is occupying the lands of common people on a large scale often pictures of protests against the occupation come from there are zameen pe kabza karenge ye inki baat ki zameen nahi hai ye inki baat ki zameen nahi hai ye hamari zameen hai this is an old tactic of Pakistan Army they did the same in Bangladesh before 1971 Pakistan army is doing the same in Balochistan and Sindh. It is also being done in Gilgit Baltistan as well as in Pak occupied Kashmir. Chinese influence is also believed to be behind this. China's CPEC is passing through Gilgit Baltistan. China wants to take this region under its complete control so that along with trade it can strengthen itself strategically. The fire of revolt in Gilgit Baltistan is not new. This beautiful region occupied by the Pakistan army and its government was sparked years ago and it is now burning. Now the people here have started openly declaring to reunite with India. Seeing the situation the day is not far when the people of Gilgit Baltistan settle their scores with Pakistan. That's all in this video. If you liked it please tell us in comments and if you have not yet subscribed to our channel please do subscribe it. See you soon with another video till then goodbye jai hind